When you create a matrix visualization in Power BI, the totals row is very rigid and it's very, very hard to customize that. But if you mixed some visualization trickery, some neat DAX, and if you are a formatting Nazi, you can come up with custom totals for your matrix visualizations, something like this. In this visualization, I am obviously having in the totals row the last year and the growth from the last year. But once you understand that how do you customize the totals row, you can literally use this totals row for showing any kind of metric for whatever KPI, for whatever calculation and for whatever text values. The trick is how did I just do that? In this video, I'm exactly going to teach you that. No further ado, let's start. All right, I'm working with this simple data model. We have the products table, the calendar table, which is my date table, and also the sales table. Now, I've built a very, very simple visualization, which is where the first column is the month column. The class comes from the products table. Against that, we have the total sales displayed and the total units displayed. Since the totals row is something that I would eventually want to customize it to show last year and growth over last year, hence, I have also applied a filter for 2012 so that I can compare the values with the last year values, 2011 values. Never Nevertheless, now let's just say that I want to go ahead and seek out customization features for the totals row. Let's just see what native Power BI features are available to us. So I'm going to click over on the table visual right here, go over to the format. In the format, I'm going to go over to the total. Now, if you just have to search for the word total, it's going to show you everything that contains the word total and all the options for that. Now, there is not one option here, which is actually going to let you customize what to put here. I mean, they can help you customize how to look at font size, things like that, but not exactly what to put in the totals row. That is a bummer. So how do we really customize it? Well, to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to mimic what is there in the column. So I will write a measure. Yes, a measure. And the measure is just going to start to mimic this particular column. Let's just see how far do we get with that. All right, to begin with, I have created this measure called the product class and the last year growth. And I'm going to start to write some DAX calculations. Let's just see if I'm able to mimic this class column or not. I'm going to start to write a very simple function that just takes a look at what is the selected value in this column. And there is a function for that literally called the selected value, selected value of the products table and the class column. So I'm just going to reference the products table and the class column. And I'm going to just commit on this and let's just see what we get. Now, at this moment, you can see that we obviously have the class representation. Presented. So we have been able to get what is there in the individual rows copied right here, but we've not really gotten the totals row. That means now if I want to customize the totals, my next job is to be able to get to the totals row somehow and do some weird stuff. I mean, no matter what weird stuff, but try to do some weird stuff. So I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say, hey, why don't you check that? Where are you working at the moment? Are you working at the scope of the product class? That means are you working here, here, here or here? Or are you trying to work at the total level, which is right here? Where are you? working. That's what I want to check for which there happens to be a function called the in scope function. So I'm going to write something like, hey, if in scope of the product class, so I can just write that if the product class is in scope, that means you're working in this row right here, then I would want you to obviously display whatever is the product. Otherwise, I would just want you to write, let's say one, like the literal one, and I'm going to close the bracket. And let's just see what happens. So once I commit on this particular measure, what you can see is that what happens is that as soon as it realizes that, hey, this is where the product class is there. It's in scope, in scope, in scope. And this is where the product class is not in scope. It's the totals row. You get to modify that to something else, not the total, but something else right here. Now, once I've understood that, how do you actually go right here? Let's just go ahead and modify what is represented here when it is the total. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, especially DAX, modeling and the M language. I teach them in a very, very structured way. I try to give you the logic of understanding the problem, deconstructing the problem and then framing the solution of the problem. That logic helps you to understand the problem at hand that we're doing in the course. Not only that, but you can then take the logic and apply to your own cases as well, which is going to tremendously boost your confidence of solving your own data problems. Hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, the link is down in the description. Go back to the video. On the totals row, I'm going to start building my calculation. Some calculation that I don't want it to be like this, the total. I want some calculation for which I will start writing perhaps, let's say, the last year calculation. And it's going to be something like this. I would want to calculate the sales of the last year. So I will use the function calculate. I want to calculate my total sales, obviously. But the context of the calculation is going to be same period last year of my calendar date. 
and I'm just gonna close the bracket, close the bracket, save on this, let's just see what we get. Now once I save on this measure, you can see that this is right aligned, obviously, because all of these are numbers in the totals row, but obviously we've been able to get some value, which is something different than the word total in the totals row. So here I am representing 1231, which is the sales of the last year. Sales of the current year is 3489. Sales of the last year is 1231. That's what we have it at the moment. Now, because we want to calculate growth and the growth happens from two numbers, the last year number, which is this particular number that we have gotten, and this number, which is the current year number, I obviously need to have more calculations done, the divide done and all of all of that. So to structure the calculation, well, I'm going to start declaring variables in the position where we have the totals, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say, something like var that's my first variable and this is my ly sales my last year sales and that is nothing but my last year sales calculation i'm going to go ahead and declare another variable var this is my cy sales and that is going to be nothing but my total sales at the moment now i'm going to go ahead and do the return statement let's just see if the numbers are appearing right or not for the moment return the cy sales just to check if this is coming up right or not once i commit on the measure you can see that it actually mimics whatever is there in this particular column so here you have low class or low end, mid segment, premium samples, and the sample products. And this is all that you get to see in this particular column. But when they, you have the totals row, the, the class is not in the scope, then you see whatever is the sales of the current year replicated right here. Now we are moving towards what we need. Let's just modify this measure even more. Let's just add one more variable that defines the growth. So I'm going to call a var again, and this is going to be the growth. And the growth obviously is going to be, hey, why don't you check that are both the numbers present or not? Is the last year number present, which is this calculation and is the current year number present which is this calculation if both numbers are present then I do my growth calculation so I'm gonna start off with a simple check and the check is going to be hey check for current year number and check for last year number these are my two checks and if these two checks are there then I would want you to go ahead and perform the growth calculation the growth calculation is simple divide so I'm gonna divide my current year sales divided by my last year sales and minus one and that is nothing but my growth calculation all right now once we have done that I'm just gonna maybe use the growth calculation instead uh, do that press enter and now I'm gonna commit on the measure now once I've been able to do that you can see that the growth appears right here so whatever the sales was there last year against that I'm able to see 183 percent growth sure enough this is not like the way that I would want it but we are getting towards the answer this should be a percentage and all of all of that but we are getting there one more thing that you might have seen it when I was showing you the sample visual that I created was the icon that represents growth. If it's a positive growth, I would want you to show up sign. If it's a negative growth, a red sign is going to be nice. So let's just create another variable, which is going to be an icon variable. And the icon variable is something like this. I'm saying, hey, I want to declare an icon variable. I want to check that if the growth is greater than a zero, then I have this symbol, which is the up symbol. If the growth is less than a zero, then a down symbol. But if there is no growth, the sales is just the same as last year then I just want to represent a dash and that's all about it now let's just say that hey I not only want to show the growth but I also want to show the icon so I can just combine that with the icon variable that I've created save it and let's just see what we get now obviously this is looking bad I understand that but hey here is the growth it's growth upwards and that's where we have the blue icon so on and so forth now let's just start to cleanse all of this up to make it slightly more presentable now when I'm trying to cleanse it up I would want a few things now obviously you can see the sales of the last year right here but when I'm taking a look at the growth I also want to have the reference of the sale now you can see the sales of the current year right here but I would also want to take a look at the reference of the last year sales and then I would like to take a look at whatever growth in a proper percentage format and then the icon so I'm trying to build three things here in this cell which are my custom totals representation so one is going to be the last year the other one is going to be my growth percentage and then the icon up or down whatever that might be so let's just start to concatenate all of these thing, things here at the moment we just have two things the growth and the icon let's just also get the last year sales so I'm gonna say hey I want to format my last year sales and I want to format my last year sales in a certain type and the format type is going to be something like this which is where I'm gonna say that hey the, the sales is going to be separated by a comma there's going to be a pipe symbol so on and so forth and all of this is again going to be concatenated with the growth and the icon now if I happen to commit on the measure you can see that we have the last year number that shows up correctly we have the growth and the icon is just behind this now 
we are going to get to more formatting. So the next thing that I would want to format is the growth, obviously. So I'm going to say, hey, I would want to format this particular growth. And the growth is going to be formatted in just one single decimal in a percentage sign. So I'm going to write the quotation marks, zero percentage quotation marks close. And then I'm going to close the bracket. And I'm going to commit on this. And let's just see what we get. We get this in a much, much better looking way. Now, here is where I can see that what is my last year, what is my this, uh, which is my growth and the icon right here. At this stage, you are obviously asking me this question. So what you have just made a measure, this doesn't look like a total, obviously. So to be able to make it look like a total, now comes the second part, which is nothing but my visual trickery, right? I'm going to trick your eyes, take a look. So what I would do is I would first of all, take this calculation or the measure that I have made to the first calculation right here. So instead of displaying total sales and total units, I would take this in the first position right here, which is simple. I can just drag it right here. Now that's one. Now there happens to be the class column and the class column is acting like a filter so that I can pull up all of these values. Although there is a filter, but I don't want to show that filter. So I'm just going to collapse this particular column and collapse it all the way towards in the end so that it just gets closed. And now you can see that we have low, mid and premium, but it doesn't quite look presentable because the values have become so big that they are not even fitting the cell. The reason why is because all of these values were getting wrapped in the cell. And if it gets wrapped in the cell, it flows to the next row. So I don't want the wrapping to happen. So before I collapse this particular column, let's just turn off the wrapping on this column. So I'm just going to go right to this particular table that I'm creating uh, and go in the format. In the format, I will search for the wrap word and turn off the wrap here turn off the wrap here and turn off the wrap right here as well. Now you can see that there is no wrapping happening and it's just showing the three ellipses or the three dots. There's something here, but I don't even want to show that. So if I just happen to collapse that all the way and collapse this column all together, you're going to see that this looks like a totals row right here. Now, obviously it's not kind of nice at the moment. So if you add a bit of visual flair formatting, padding and things like that, this suddenly starts to look much presentable. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. And if we do all of that formatting jazz, it looks something like this. All that I have done is just made it more presentable. I have gone ahead and I've customized the way the total looks. I've done some coloring right here. I've done some uh, shading up on the headers right here. I've done some data bars right here. I've applied a bunch of slicers up on the top so that it looks nice. And now it actually shows me the growth or the fall as compared to the last year. Now. If you were working in the native Power BI visual for the growth, you would probably have to create a column. We don't have to make the column. I can take a look at what is my June's entire class of sales right here in the totals row. I obviously I can take a look at what was the sales last year and there has been a drop of 8%. Now, you would obviously have to coach your users in order for them to take a look at the totals the right way. But this is just your imagination. Once you understand that, how do you customize the totals row at the moment in the totals row? I have fit that last year calculation, but you can literally fit any calculation that you desire. There is another very interesting visualization that I have made, which talks about that. How can you take different periods of a line chart and find out growth? And it looks very attractive. That's the next video that you would want to watch. I'll see you there.